Hello everyone and welcome back to Tie Talk with Dan. We have a nightmare story for you today. So sit back, strap on in and get ready for this corker. Okay, welcome back. Now, this before I read this story out from Paul, who's a subscriber to the channel, this is the reason why I tell everybody to take your time and don't go too fast in a relationship here in Thailand with a Thai girl that you've just met. Otherwise, it can be very, 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 very costly. So let's kick off with this story now. Hi, Dan. Just wanted to share my story with you had a nightmare. I travelled to Thailand in March for one week's fishing and second week a chill out at Phuket. I had no real interest in it. All I said I'd never go with a girl and get sucked in. How wrong was I? First night in Phuket, me and my 26 friends, men and women, was going out for a meal. Then this stunning girl walking past said hello to me and I said hello back. Then one of my friends said, come for a meal with us, and she obliged. She spoke good English and had a great night out, went for drinks later, and it was brilliant. She left on the night with my number and returned to her flat the next day. She messaged me saying she couldn't see me on the Sunday. She was out with friends for a birthday, which all turned out to be the truth. So we met up on the Monday morning in a cafe and spent the day together. It was great. Couldn't have gone any better. She returned to her flat to get changed, and we met up for drinks on the night, and then went back to my hotel. Everything was great, like a dream. We spent the rest of the week together, and on the Saturday, I had to return to England. She even came to the airport to see me off. Soon as I landed in England, I messaged to say I got back safe. And within two minutes, she FaceTimed me. Uh, my friend who had been with me in Thailand had picked me up from the airport and said, whoa, she's keen, and said every, everyone thought she was amazing. We continued to FaceTime two to three times a day, two to three hours a time. It was great. She was always in her room as she told me she was an accountant. Then we planned a trip back in August for my birthday for three weeks. In the meantime, she rang me crying her eyes out. Uh, she couldn't contact her mother. So on and off for three hours, she rang me. Then she found she was in hospital with a massive facial injury. She sent me pictures. So straight away, I said, you need to go home. So I paid for her to fly to her hometown, Maha Sarakam. Then I paid for her treatment, £600. She was there for two weeks, then flew back to Bangkok where she divorced her ex-Thai husband. I was quite shocked. Then she returned to Phuket, still FaceTiming and texting quite regular, was getting a bit of pain with work. In meantime, it was getting ready to fly out to Thailand. So off I went. She met me at the airport, messaging, where are you? I came out and she was there with a bunch of flowers. Amazing. We went back to the hotel and was at it like rabbits for hours. It was amazing. A dream woman. We was going out for meals and drinking every night. Then we flew to Maha Sarakam to meet her family. On the way to the village, we stopped at a huge supermarket. I said, why we stop here? I ended up paying for a bed and side cabinet and all the blankets first. £650, gone. We later arrived in Borobu, her village. Whoa, it was amazing. So basic, but the life I wished for, quiet and chilled. I met all the family and we parted and drank all night. We spent two days in the village. In The, village. the sex continued in the house. It was a dream. The next day, she said, what you want to do for your birthday? Then bang, like an idiot. I said, let's get 
married. Everything felt right, so dowry was agreed at 300,000 baht. Gold was bought for nearly 4,000 pounds. All the wedding was set up, organised and blessed by the monks on the Saturday. Everything was set up. Disco and catering tables was fantastic like a dream. She was the ideal wife. The day of the wedding came. I walked down the street followed by 400 villagers and had the day of my dreams. We was married, we parted all night again. We spent the rest of the week in the village. Every day wanted money, money, money. 10,000 to 15,000 baht a day. Money was disappearing like water. We sat down and discussed where we was going now. I agreed she returned to the village to live after returning to Phuket and I would pay £140 a week as in the meantime we applied for a visa to come to England and she had to go to Bangkok to do tests and paperwork. It was all passed and was waiting on the decision from the embassy. I flew all her belongings back to the village. Uh, scooter, cases and boxes of stuff cost me £800. Then all the games started. She ran a shop with her sister, and as it was rainy season, she wanted a brand new car as they went to the market at 2am every morning to get stock. I said, no, why you need a car when you're coming to England for six months? So she sulked and blocked me on everything on the Friday. I thought, stuff this, I'm going out for a pint with my mates. Just got in the pub, phone started going crazy, message after message. All in all, she had deceived me and sold all the gold for the wedding to pay for the car. I went crazy and she blocked me again. The following Thursday, I woke up to 10 pictures of her in, in a showroom with a brand new Toyota Yaris. Another phone call, I went crazy. I said, you get us in big debt. You don't do good job. So the tears flowed. I sent her £1,500 to get the gold back as she had pawned it. We chatted for a week. We was okay. When I was getting ignored, phone her. She wouldn't never answer for an hour. Then I found out she was gambling and drinking from six in the morning till the time we went to bed. It was doing my head right in. So we had row after row about this. Then she blocked me for one week. She said I make her mad. She unblocked me the following week like nothing had happened. And I said, you look different. What's wrong? Then I noticed black eyes. She had spent money on a nose job. I was livid. We had a massive row. I said, it's time you come to England now. She was adamant I wait till December. Don't book tickets. She then moved the goalposts again on payments. She wanted £200 a week. I said, are you taking the mick? Now she said her finances had, ch had changed. She had to buy things for rice and son's school. I said we agreed on £140 and she started screaming down the phone like a crazy woman and blocked me for another week. I paid the £200 as I thought I keep family now and keep peace with my wife. She unblocked me again but only to text. She said we not FaceTime for one month which I thought was strange. I was now having three to five texts a day. No love you or anything nice now. Then bang, out of the blue. This woman who married me was turning into the ultimate bitch. Blaming everything onto me now was all my fault. She said to continue, I would have to pay £2,644 per month. I said, not a effing chance. She ignored me for three hours, then said she had calmed down and £200 a week was enough. I said I'll keep this up till she came to England and I'd drop it back to £140 and I'll keep you wanting for nothing in England as I'd be getting my pleasures as well. So happy days. I paid this for two weeks. Still no FaceTime, only five texts a day now. I was starting to get peed off. Now, so on the Wednesday, I messaged, I want to now to know if you love me. She replied next day, yes, I love you. I said, okay, 
halfway through the day, then no more texts till I woke up at 6 on the Friday morning and I woke up too. I don't do this kind of work anymore. You're not my customer anymore. I won't speak to you anymore. Good. Bye. And I haven't spoke to her since. Blocked on everything. Her sisters and aunties ignore me and everything. My life's going crap now. Going out my mind. How my so-called wife would do this to me. After a month, she unblocked me on Facebook. The beginning of December, she changed profile picture. And in sunglasses, you can see the reflection of a man now. I'm seething and cannot do anything about it. Then I get an email out of the blue saying I've neglected my wife and family. She'd lose feelings for me. I thought, what the hell goes on in these people's heads? So with a bit of digging on Facebook, I found some photos. She was a massage girl from Phuket, always said was accountant. She never worked there when we was together as she FaceTimed me constantly. Then on New Year's Day, she put a photo on her Facebook with a new man, a Westerner. It blown my world apart. It's been the best and worst year of my life I've ever been. So low, I was close to doing the worst. My friends pulled me through. Absolutely blown my world apart. And on working money out, she had about £25,000 off me. She's still in the village in Borobu. Her name's Pepe. And I, and I never found out. She's on YouTube working in a massage shop. Be careful, guys. They are the best liars about. And I made mistakes along the way. But be careful, guys. I'm lucky I'm still alive. It's affected me that much. I watch your channel all the time now and cringe at the stories. She's working on her next man now for money. And I found out I was her third husband. I have many friends in England with Thai wives, and I thought it would never happen to me. They were so happy together and nice people. How wrong was I? Thanks. Paul from the UK. What an amazing horror story. And I feel very, very sorry that Paul had to go through this kind of trauma where he felt that he could have literally harmed himself. He already lost around about a total of £25,000 and had all the heartache and all that ordeal to go through. Now, guys, this is where you have to be extremely careful. No matter how beautiful that woman is, no matter how amazing that sex is, you need to chill out, take your time and don't throw cash around like it's nothing because... That will kind of entice the woman to use and abuse you so much when she sees how easily you pay out money. Yeah, she's going to come at you like all guns blazing. And this woman seemed to figure Paul out very, very quickly and knew how to work him in order to try and generate more and more money out of him. She was super ruthless. So guys, be careful out there and Paul keep your chin up mate and best of luck for the future now guys if you've got a story to tell as always please send an email in to tytalkwithdan at gmail.com thanks for watching until the next time ciao for now guys